Hello everyone. Welcome back to Anatomy at Easiest. In today's video, we will be studying ribs and sternum. Basically, the identification of ribs and their side determination. So let's start. These are the ribs and the sternum. Now, the ribs are paired bones. There are 12 pairs of ribs present in human body with a sternum present in the midline of chest sternum is also called as chest bone so it is present in the midline of the thoracic cage or the chest or the thorax of human being now talking about the sternum this is the sternum bone this is the sternum now you can see sternum is a single bone it somewhat resembles the shape of a sword according to the sword it is divided or according to the shape it is divided into three parts the upper part that is this quadrilateral part is called as manubrium then this part is called as body and the last pointed part is called as xiphoid process the upper part resembles the handle of sword this part resembles the blade of sword and this resembles the point of sword so the manubrium body and the xiphoid process this is the sternum the details of sternum we will study in the detailed video of sternum bone after that we come to ribs ribs are 12 pairs in numbers now classification of ribs is also there the ribs are divided into different different types and the classification is also different First is the ribs are classified into typical and atypical ribs. The ribs kept on these side, this side are typical one and ribs kept on this side are atypical one. Now what are typical and what are atypical? atypical? As I said, the ribs are 12 pairs in number. The third to ninth ribs, the third rib up till ninth rib are typical ribs. Typical means they are having common features. The first, second, tenth, eleventh and twelfth are atypical rib. That means these are having some features which are different from the typical ribs. Now ribs are also classified into vertebrochondral, vertebrosternal and vertebral ribs. Now what are these? Vertebrosternal ribs means that's that the ribs are articulating with the vertebrae and the sternum as according to the name vertebro sternal ribs so the first two seventh ribs are vertebro sternal ribs then vertebro chondral ribs are posteriorly they are articulating with the vertebrae and anteriorly they are articulating with the upper costal cartilages that means they are not directly articulating with the sternum anteriorly they are articulating with the costal cartilages of the upper rib. So, 8th, 9th and 10th ribs are vertebrochondral ribs. And if 11th, 12th ribs which do not articulate in, uh, anteriorly with any of the bone are called, as, are called as vertebral ribs. Now, from the 8th to 12th ribs are also called as false ribs because they are not articulating anteriorly with the sternum. And 1st to 7th are also called as true ribs. The 11th and 12th ribs are also called as floating ribs. So these are the different nomenclatures of different different types of ribs. Uh, false ribs, true ribs, vertebrochondral, vertebrosternal, vertebral also called as floating ribs and typical and atypical ribs. Now talking about the features and side determination of a typical rib. Now this is a typical rib. Each rib is having two ends, a posterior end and an anterior end. Now, how to discriminate between these two? On the posterior end, the head articulating facet, head represents the articulating facet. Then succeeding to this, neck and then a tubercle is present. This part is present posteriorly as it articulates with the vertebrae. On the anterior side or the anterior end, depression or groove is present on which the costal cartilage articulates and via this it articulates with the sternum. So this is the anterior end and this is the posterior end. 
now ribs are placed obliquely like, like this the posterior end is upwards from the anterior end now this is posterior this is anterior the inner surface is always con cave and the outer surface is always convex you have seen the thoracic cage it is truncated cone like structure so the inner surface is concave always now this is inner this is outer now how to discriminate between the upper and the lower one we can place this rib like this also and like this also now to discriminate between the upper border and the lower border we have to look for the lower border which is sharp as compared to the upper border and near to the lower border a groove is present which is called as costal groove in which intercostal vein artery and nerves lies so very easy this is posterior end this is anterior end this is outer surface this is inner surface this is superior border and this is inner uh, inferior border near to the inferior border costal groove is present so this rib is of left side posterior anterior outer inner inferior and superior this is of left side similar to this we can also discriminate the sides of other ribs like this this is the posterior end this is the anterior end the outer surface the inner surface the superior border inferior border the groove costal groove so this is again of left side all the ribs kept here are of left side now after the typical ribs we come to atypical ribs first one is the first rib this is the first rib now you can see the first rib is the shortest broadest and the most curved rib as compared to all the other ribs it is the shortest broadest and most curved rib similar to the other typical ribs the posterior end is having a head which is rounded then the neck and the tubercle the anterior end is pitted and costal cartilage articulates to it now this rib is not having the outer and inner surface and the superior and inferior border it is having the superior and inferior surface and outer and inner border the inner border is concave and the outer border is convex on the superior surface a tubercle is present which you can feel here like this that is called as a scalene tubercle but the easiest way to discriminate or decide a side is to keep this bone on table like this after keeping the bone on table you have to see both the ends are touching the table when both the ends are touching the table then that is the correct side of the bone if you keep like this then one end is not touching that is the posterior end is not touching the table it is touching on the both ends on this side so this is of right side the posterior end the anterior end the outer border the inner border and both the ends are touching the table or the surface so this is of right side bone after that the second rib this is the second rib this is the posterior end this is the anterior end similar to all the other bones the outer surface here is more pointed superiorly and the inner surface here is more pointed inferiorly on to the superior surface a uh, uh, oval shaped impression is present which is for the attachment of muscles so you can easily determine the site also it both the ends are touching the surface if we keep it like that then the surfaces will not the ends will not touch the surface so it is again of left side after that how to differentiate between 10th and the typical uh, ribs this is the 10th rib and this is a typical rib now this is head of typical rib you can see here two facets are present on the head on 10th rib only a single facet is present on the head for articulation with the vertebrae so this is the only difference between a typical and a 10th rib on a typical two facets are present separated by a 
रिज लाइक स्ट्रक्चर वेयर इज इन टेंथ ओनली अ सिंगल फेस इट इज प्रेजेंट रेस्ट ऑल द फीचर्स आर सिमिलर टू द टिपिकल रिप After that, these are the smallest and the float uh, anterior end pointed, uh, smallest and the pointed ribs. These are the eleventh and twelfth rib. These are straight, somewhat straight bones, not curved or twisted, as according to rest of the ribs. Their anterior ends are pointed because they are not articulating with the sternum. their posterior ends are having facet for articulation with the 11th g11 and g12 vertebrae now you can see very well the differences between these two and all the other vertebrae now how to discriminate between 11th and 12th on the 11th vertebrae a slight costal groove is present whereas in 12th no costal groove is present also on 11th a slight angle this is the angle the angle is that point on which the rib is curved a slight angle is present where is in 12th no angle is present so these are 11th and 12th ribs so these were the points on the basis of which you can discriminate or identify the ribs the typical and the atypical and their side determination you can easily determine the side of a typical rib and also of the first second 10th 11th and 12th rib keeping the anterior end anteriorly posterior and posteriorly and the inner surface and outer surface accordingly so that was all i hope you all are liking the videos please like and subscribe my channel and share with your friends thank you for watching